We had T-Bar beating Xavier Woods. Kofi Kingston is out with a jaw issue. I think they called it a broken jaw. I don't know if it's a broken jaw. Kofi did an Instagram thing, and he doesn't seem to know what the problem is. I don't think he can close his mouth all the way. It may have been from a shot that he took in a match against the Hurt Business a few weeks ago. So he's going to have to get that checked out. And for the time being, obviously Big E is on SmackDown. Kofi is out. The New Day is no more, at least temporarily. Xavier Woods is on his own. And Xavier Woods' is first night on his own, and he is out there losing to T-Bar. Mustafa Ali and the rest of Retribution, they were ringside for this match. Now, Ali had cut a promo on Raw Talk one week earlier. He was shitting on the Legends and Legends Night and how WWE dedicated three hours of television time to men who can't even walk, yet were left out. Yeah, you know, they talk about how they've paved the way, right? They've paved the way for the next generation. Well, when are you going to let us walk down that path? You know, it was actually some really good uh, verb verbiage, and he was showing some good fire, and he was making some very good points in that promo. And Charlie Caruso, I think it was in reference to Hulk Hogan, right? Because Ali was talking about you got Hogan on the show doing what you're going to do, brother, and Charlie went, yeah, but you heard the reaction he got, right? She was talking about she's talking about the crowd reaction, the fake crowd reaction that he got from the fans, right? Or the virtual fans. Well, at that point, Ali did what any person in that situation would do, because the first thing I did when I heard her mention that was I started laughing. Like, what crowd reaction are you talking about? Ali had the same reaction. He started mocking the so-called reaction. He acknowledged that, oh yeah, they really pumped them up, right? They really pumped up those cheers. And he admitted what we already know, which is that they use piped-in crowd noise for these shows. Something that every major sport does. Since the start of this pandemic, Major League Baseball had teams with cardboard cutouts in the stands. Some people even paid to use pictures of their pets. And they put them in the first five rows. I mean, it's not as if the announcers were pretending that all the cheering that we heard was coming from fucking Cujo in the crowd. Man's best friend. We know this. It's obvious. This is not some big secret. I actually like the line. I like the line that Ali used. I like, you know, it's like talking uh, smack, where they feel like, they let the leash loose on those guys, and they're not uh, reading from a script, and they actually don't sound like robots. They sound like actual human beings. They can ad-lib more. I mean, that's kind of, I guess, what Raw Talk is supposed to be, isn't it? Well, WWE doesn't like that. And on Fightful Select, which you can uh, subscribe to on their Patreon, Sean Ross Sapp noted that Ali's comment rubbed somebody Behind the scenes, I don't think he said who, but it rubs somebody backstage in WWE the wrong way. So now, he may have backstage heat for the comment that he made on Raw Talk. Ali posted a tweet a few days after this with a quote that said, We, we don't know if we can give you a live mic again. And it had a photo of him sitting at the desk on Raw Talk. Now, Sapp noted, this is what he said from Fightful. He said, I had heard that there was somebody who took exception to him, making light that they pipe in stuff. I asked about this, and I was like, what would anyone be mad at? And they're like, well, he said that we piped in noise. And Sapp said, they do. And this person said, yeah, but we don't want them going out there and saying that. Now, they can't be that upset with him, I think, given the fact that they posted the entire clip to their YouTube channel. They didn't edit anything out. They didn't cut that part out. It's all up there right now. You can go watch it yourself if you want. But this is the sort of bullshit that is suffocating this product. Of all the things for them to be upset about, think about this. Of all the things for them to be upset about, they should be upset with the way that they have sabotaged these people's careers with this terrible gimmick. That's what they should be upset about. And instead they get offended because they drew attention to the crowd noise. This is what upsets them. You know what Ali should do? Ali should bring his own signs to the ring when they when Retribution comes out for their matches going forward. 
Ali and maybe all the members of Retribution, they should come out with signs. These giant placards. They should bring them down to the ring. And they should hold them up for all the Thunderdome fans when he wants them to cheer or boo. He should hold up an applause sign whenever T-Bag hits a big move. And hold up a sign that says, boo this man. Whenever his opponent hits a move against T-Bar. Or against Mace. Or against, uh, what's Mia Yim's name? Reconciliation. <laughs> what, the, what the hell's her name? Retaliation Reckoning. Reckoning. Some ridiculous name. That's what they should do. What are they going to do? Fire him? <laughs> At this point, I would think he might welcome it. Make it part of his gimmick. I mean, that's what retribution should be anyway, is it not? I mean, I thought when they came in, they were fighting against the system. I thought they said the system wronged us. It's an injustice and we're fighting back. We're taking matters into our own hands. Wasn't that the entire basis of this gimmick when they first showed up last summer? And they were firebombing the generator outside the building. And they were cutting the power and they were doing all these things. I mean, I guess that story went out the whole uh, went out the window the minute that they signed these people to contracts. After running around with Molotov cocktails and chainsaws. But they should be calling out stuff like that just to piss people off in the company. That should be what they do on TV. Instead, they get oh, they get offended. How dare he make that comment? They don't want us to know that they pipe in crowd noise. How many people do you even think are watching Raw Talk? You would think he said that in the middle of a promo on Raw on USA Network. He said this on a show that if that show gets 100,000 viewers, I would be shocked. Maybe the YouTube clip got more than that. How many people are even watching Raw Talk and this is what they get upset about? They treat their audience like fucking morons. Speaking of morons and teabag, I gotta mention this little uh, Twitter kerfluffle involving T-Bar and Sammy Guevara. You may have seen this. I don't know exactly what prompted this, but on his Twitter, T-Bar said... Some little teenage virgin on AEW stole my finisher like four years ago after we did a show together. I would steal something from his moveset, but it's all just ricochet moves. And I guess the uh, little AEW virgin he was referring to was Sammy Guevara. Because Sammy responded and said, uh, Someone tell T-Bag the move actually belongs to Matt DeMorest, the guy he stole it from. And I'm just trying to get the move to be seen since you know he's never on TV. Also, while you're sitting doing nothing in catering on Monday, check out my newest vlog. To which T-Bar responded, Someone tell Panda Kid that I had a singles match on TV last night. And I didn't steal the move from some backyarder. I, th I saw it at a professional, or I thought of it, he said, in a professional wrestling ring with Christian Casanova. Try being creative sometime instead of, oh, I don't know, making jokes about rape. Both T-Bar and Panda Kid win for said tweet this week because they both sound like a couple of fools. They talk about, yeah, you hear wrestlers talk about the fans being marks, podcasters and YouTubers. They never said foot in a ring. What a bunch of marks. But then you'll have the occasional wrestler with a, with a brain in his head who admits... That the wrestlers themselves are the biggest marks of all. And ladies and gentlemen, I give this to you on display here in living color. These fools are arguing over who stole the other guy's finisher. And somehow this devolved into T-Bar bringing up the rape joke that Sammy Guevara made about Sasha Banks. These two are arguing about who came up with, with a finishing move. And they call the fans marks. I give to you Marky Mark number one and Marky Mark number two. They went for sad tweet this week. T-Bar later deleted those tweets. Maybe the same backstage dipshit in WWE who was offended by Ali's comments on Raw Talk told T-Bar to take his tweets down too. 